Hello, Ken Spriggs here with part three of my uh, 2001 Discovery build. Uh, really, really loving this kit. This is an awesome kit. I've wanted to have a model of this ship for um, literally decades since I was a teenager. Um, back in the 60s, 70s, and 80s. Um, so come along really, really well. Uh, I started doing some of the painting on the kit and uh, I'm using some aftermarket parts aftermarket sets I should say uh, from Aztec dummies and uh, looking at some uh, from paragraphics as well uh, to really augment this kit so let's go ahead and see what progress I've come up with so here's a test of the kit on its stands I have the entire spine glued together so from this section all the way back to this section, it's all one piece now. This attaches with magnets, and the dome with its front, with its back ring, attaches with magnets. So, uh, I laid a tape measure down to show that the overall length from the center of the back stand to the center of the front stand is about 34 inches, give or take. And then where I positioned the middle under the section in front of the uh, antenna array, it's about right in the middle, 17 inches. So that's more of a center point in this kit rather than the antenna dish. So uh, so that lets it stand up a little better from there. I had to put it on the carpet because it's just so long it won't fit on my work table to get it to all be sitting on a flat surface. When I'm done, I'm going to have that on some kind of a board or plank of something, some kind to, to give it a better, um, a better feel. So as far as the, um, the strength of the kit, it's, it's not terrible. You could support it in just two places, but you'd still want to do it on the spine versus just in the middle. You're going to get some sagging if you just have one point or if you were to hang it as well, you'd want to put some connectors in at least two places to give it some strength just because of its sheer length and then you have more weight on the front more weight on the back than you do in the middle so all right so let me take that off there and I'll show you just how that can be kind of handled with two hands all right so just handling it as a kit it, it does have some sturdiness to it but there is a little bit of sag if I just hold it in the center which I can do and it's not terribly noticeable but you can see towards the front that's got some weight to it it's going to pull it down a bit just because it's a it's a large kit um, now certainly if i were to hold it uh, vertically <laughs> pointing down kind of hanging it it holds it a little better but it's really big it's a very big kit so it's going to have to be supported but it's surprisingly strong for being so long and so many components but uh but i like the way i've i've put that i think it works better if the main parts in the middle are one solid piece they kind of have to be to give it any strength and then i can remove the other ones as needed so all right so there you go and there's just the spine section without the command module on it or the propulsion unit so it's it's fairly sturdy I mean its sheer length makes it want to have a little bit of a bow in it if you put any weight on either end but without that it's fairly solid and I think that'll work a lot better and then when I want to I can attach the command module using the magnets and the engine pod using the magnets as well all right so I picked up a, um, a board in order to use as the base, the stand. Um, I got a fairly decent finished one. It's only a quarter inch thick and it's a four by four. Four inches wide by quarter inch and four feet long. So it's just a little bit bigger than what I need. I don't have the kit attached to one of the base yet. I just sat it on there to kind of get an idea. The width is perfect, just what I want it to be. For this kit and uh, and it's nice and light too because it's so thin 
Uh, I think it's like pine or poplar or something, but uh, but there you go. So this is actually just the length, maybe just a little bit further, maybe about an inch further in the back. That's probably what I'll do. Probably do the same on the front. Probably cut this off about an inch in front of it. Just so the kit is overhung a little bit by it. I don't want the kit hanging off the edge, but, uh, but that'll work nicely. And like I said, once I'm done, uh, I'll get a flat black coating or a satin black coating on this. It looks sort of like the monolith colors. That's about it. Maybe a bit of a backdrop as a space scene. We'll see. I'm not quite decided yet. I don't want to put too much into the base of this, but these will be glued onto it. They'll be painted black as well, and so will the so will the stands that go up to the kit, and then they'll be removable by magnets. So. All right, so that's looking pretty good. And it's also nice to be able to put the kit on here if I want to do some things with it. So I can I could put some newspaper under it and then do some painting on it as well if I want to. Or I'll probably take the parts apart and just paint like the spine and that kind of thing. But there we go, so looking pretty cool. There's that straight on shot of it. Bit of an angle. Okay. Alright, so this is definitely coming along nicely. I like seeing it all together. It's, it's a pretty impressive kit for sure. Just the sheer size of it. So here's my hand obviously and there's the <laughs> massive size of this kit. Well, like I said, this is a four foot board so very nearly that long. It's about 42 inches as they say. So yeah. All right, so coming along nicely. All right. All right, so I've begun painting the spine section. And what I did was I put an initial coat of the German gray right here. I'm gonna have to get some more of this. Uh, the hobby shop I went to didn't have the larger bottles like it does this right here. So this is really what I needed. So this one's almost completely depleted. I'd use most of it to get a, um, to get a coating on just this spine section. Uh, I went over it a couple of times. I initially went in with the first pass where I just focused on between these these modules to get that spine in there and um, and then I went ahead and did coating on the spines themselves or the I'm sorry the cargo modules and I had to get the sides of them as well and also the end pieces and down on this end too so I got a nice coating I don't think there are any real bare spots I had to go through and Get a couple of the ends because they didn't quite get the paint either um, but what i'm doing is um i'm putting different layers of coloring on here so i started with this as kind of the the black basing as it were so a lot of the detail inside and in between will stay nice and dark once i go over it with a um with the lighter neutral gray which is what i'll be doing next now before i do that I'm going to go ahead and start applying some paint masks uh, and I got the very excellent uh, discovery kit from Aztec Dummy by Lou Damaso. Really really nice set. This is pretty awesome uh, and he gives a lot of really nice um, instructions here. There are two sheets, two sided, that go over the various, um, the various parts that you're going to add. Uh, in addition, uh, he, he built one of these himself. Uh, actually, a few months ago, he got an advanced copy, and he built it together, and he also created the masks here to put on it. So if you watch his video, he'll go over exactly what he does and how he does it. Uh, and like he said, it's, it's not an exact thing. Everybody's is going to be different. Uh, you're just going to kind of get the overall look of the kit from the movie. So whatever you want to do, how much detail you want to put on, it's really up to you, and he's giving you the tools to do it. So 
But um, what I'm going to start with is actually the second instructions. And that'll be that collar section right there. So that's this piece right here. And the reason I'm going to start with it, and probably this one as well, right up here, is that on some of the panels, I want them to stay a dark gray, like you see right here that he has. So once I already have that on there, since I already have it on there, I'm going to go ahead and start applying some of these masking strips in order to keep the dark look. And I'll do the same, let me see if it's on this one here. Nope, let me see. Okay, right there. So there's that piece there, which is on the front. So what I want to do is I want to go ahead and mask off some of the dark areas. There's that piece again right there. While there's still the real dark, the dark German gray. And then once that's completed, I can go ahead and put on a coating of the neutral gray. And I'll just lightly mist it over it because I want a lot of the darker to stay hidden underneath it. And this, the key to this kit is that you have to have a lot of different grays and whites to come up with the, um, with the image that you want. And in addition, you want to keep uh, a lot of detailed details underneath that are still darker and some are lighter and they're going to all come together and, and give you that idea of various panels on this ship because this thing is tremendously large in real life I mean well in the movie if it was a real life kit it's incredibly long I'd have to look it up and see but I'm thinking somewhere like uh, 60 feet or something like that probably bigger than that but it's quite a large kit quite a large ship so it would have various panels making it up uh, and there'd be some delineation so I'm going to go ahead and start putting on some of the masking on this end over here as well as this piece over here and uh, and then I'll show you once I get those complete and then we'll start doing a, uh, a progressively lighter coating of gray all right all right here's the completed masking and I'm not trying for screen perfection I don't think there are many real screenshots of this back part anyway so I just kind of randomized them to some degree. Sometimes I double them up. I put that little stripe on there uh, because it shows it in his instructions, but he doesn't really have a curved piece that fits it well, so I'm going to try that out and see how that works. I might have to just touch that up a bit because it's, it's not really a good seal on that. So, And then on the uh, front section, I did uh, a little more extensive pattern. You can see. Now keep in mind, these panels here are gonna be the ones that will stay this really dark German gray. So the next step for this end and for the other end is to put on a, a lighter gray. I'm gonna do the, um, the neutral, neutral gray. So it's still pretty dark but it's gonna be lighter than what this one is. So I'm gonna use that on this piece and on the front piece only. And then once that's dry, I'll put another set of masks over top and mask off some other sections that'll be a lighter gray. And then, um, and then I'll put an even lighter gray. And just keep doing that pretty, pretty much probably like three levels, the dark, the medium, the light, and then they'll all be blended together with a really light gray or almost white. Uh, as far as these panels are concerned, the next step will be to put a really light spraying of, of the white, of the Tamiya flat white. And then let that dry. And then I'm gonna use the patterns that he's included, these little pieces to alternate a pattern of pure white, just white white, and the really dark German gray again. Either the German gray or this one here. 
but uh, a light and a dark gray over top of like almost like a white with the, the dark underneath and get that pattern and then those will be blended in as well so ultimately the whole thing will be blended in with the same kind of a light light gray when I'm done but uh, but have some different patterns of colors into there so all right so I'll show you that more as I go but um, this is ready to start doing some painting on either end of these and then we'll look at getting like a white coat on this and then go further so and this is really perfect to to do some work on uh, I thought it would be awkward but it really isn't a lot of times what I'll do is I will either sit this down on the end and just work on it or do it the other way around and just balance it down on top of that so it's really not that hard to work with and this piece is nice and solid as one whole section of spine so that's working out great so let me go ahead and work some more on this and then we'll see uh, see what progress I can come up with here all right coming out great All right, and here is the um, here is a light coating of the Tamiya flat white, misted over top of the German gray. So it gets the effect that I want to have, where it has a, a kind of a light gray look, and then there are different parts of it that have some different shading. It's not all perfect, and that's what I want it to be. You can see like a little bit in the spine there, and some of the some of the panels that have a little bit darker shading in them and that's the idea and there'll be more layers of paint here too but um, but that's kind of what the black basing is supposed to be uh, normally it would be black paint but in this case I use the German gray is to give it the idea of uneven panels and that sort of thing so I don't know if I clarified well on the last video but the idea here there's different painting techniques being used on this kit because of the different types of detail. On these panels, they all have some detail, but they're fairly uniform. Uh, there's not gonna be detailed panels and darker sections and that sort of thing. Um, so in this particular one, I'm going with the, um, the kind of black basing or gray basing technique where you start really dark and then you put on lighter shades of the gray. And then as I showed with the, um, uh, with the, the templates from Aztec Dummy, he came up with an ingenious idea of putting almost like a camouflage pattern where you have those little little squares that are designed to just stick over each of these and spray on those little uh, like lines and and a kind of a camouflage pattern in a way and uh, the way he demonstrated it is you start with like this kind of a color it's almost like a middle light gray or a really well fairly light gray and you put on a darker gray probably either like the um, neutral gray or the uh, German gray and then you reposition them and you put on like a, a stark white just pure white and they they're dark at first but then when you blend them in it gives it more of a detailed look so that pattern is going to be used on the spine and on most of the back propulsion unit uh, the flat parts of the propulsion unit um, the front, of course, is going to be completely separate with different light and dark panels. The same with this part and the same with this part here. So these are going to have the other technique I mentioned where you, you start with a dark base and then you put on the stickers, some of the stickers, some of the masking. You put on a lighter gray, but still dark. Put on more stickers and leave the other ones on. Then you do it a third time with a really lighter gray. And then when you take them off, you have different pa different panels. Some are really dark, some are medium dark, some are really light dark, or light gray. And then you, you blend them all together with a, a blending coat as well. Um, so I'll show you more as I go on this, but, but this turned out really nice and this is ready to go ahead. And I'll probably start with some of those patterns since I have the ends taped off for the time being. So, all right, uh, and I did wanna, uh, correct myself. I did look up the actual size of the ship in the movie or the book. And it's there's some varying sizes, but I believe it's uh, well according to the internet, it's 460 feet. I believe if you look at the read the book, 
but uh, the movie it's more like 800 feet I was saying like 60 feet which is kind of crazy probably the the front piece is that big but uh, super large kit so it's probably about 800 feet I believe they mentioned that in the movie 2010 the year we make contact because uh, I don't think it's ever mentioned in 2001 a space odyssey but it would have to be just by the size of it it would have to be several hundred feet long so okay so let's go ahead and get some more of this going and uh and it's coming along really well and here's some of the um the patterning on there and right now it does look kind of stark, but that's that's kind of the idea. You want to get a bunch of little bits of detail, white and gray in there. And then it'll all get blended together with a light gray when I'm done. Here's the other side. It's the same basic thing as, compa as compared to that. So you can see that's just one shade. This has several different shades of dark and light. And the same with over there. Alright, so working on each of these, there's those panels as you can see with the paint on them. So I'm going to keep working on that and get all of these done in that fashion. I'm just trying to be careful not to get any paint in between on those other things. Uh, it's hard to get those the sides of these panels. As you can see, I haven't done a great job of those, but we'll see. I might have to go back on a pass and just like stick a paste on in there and just lightly dust it. So that's a little trickier, but okay. So that's coming along well. All right. And let me show you a little bit of what I got done on the back uh, engine. Uh, propulsion unit as well. I started working on that. Alright, so that last shot showed that I had put a dark gray, a German gray, onto the uh, back propulsion unit. And now uh, I've put a, a like a light spraying of white over top of it. And as you can see, the purpose of this is that this doesn't look white, it looks gray, because it would take several coats to cover that dark gray to make it look actually white. So, but the idea is you don't put several coats, you just put like a light coat. And so a lot of the detail still has the, uh, the darker gray in it. And so it highlights some more of that detail. It kind of gives it a, an image of it. Plus you get kind of an uneven look. It's not all the same shade, which is what something this size would be. It wouldn't be all the same shade. You'd have variations in colors and things like that. So I'm going to let that dry right now. And then I'm going to start applying some of that uh, pattern on here as well with the dark gray, followed up by the uh, some white pattern over it. So, okay. All right, so I got an initial pass of the neutral gray on top of the propulsion unit. I have the top, the bottom, and the sides. Looks really, really cool. Uh, gives it kind of a camouflage look. It's kind of neat. Uh, and like I said, in the end, you're not going to see it this stark of a difference. Uh, what the next step will be to go over it with a reverse pass of flat white. Do the same thing basically, flip the pattern over so they're not lining up exactly with the other ones, <clears throat> and then go over it with a white pass. Do the same thing. Uh, I still have to do the very back panel there. I'm going to try to get those little two side uh, pieces there as well. Um, now, I did manage to get this all done with just one of the masking pieces, it's pretty well gooped up at this point and coated up with it so it was a bit tricky towards the end but um but i managed to get the whole thing done with just one uh, and the aztec dummy set comes with three of them so if you can see that there on the camera but there's two more right here 
and they're all identical, there's three of them. So I'm gonna start with a clean one to go ahead and do the white pass. And then if I have some left over, I can use it for the spine, cut them into little pieces. So, okay. But uh, that worked really great as far as the way that I did it. I just took some regular masking tape and I stuck it along the edges of the piece. So it gives me kind of a nice framing piece. So for most of it, I could just sit it down and secure the tape so it stays down and it's not coming up on the edges. Plus it makes a nice little area so I don't overspray onto the rest of the kit. And you can see it worked out pretty well. It's, it's easy to control within that. So you can see the edges of this tape are still the regular masking tape color. So, okay. So that turned out really well. I really like how that looks. Definitely gives it a lot of detail. And once it's all done, it will just have a lot of different color panels, almost like an Aztec, Aztecing, like you do on some of the Star Trek ships. But I really like how that's turned out. So, okay, great. So uh, I'm gonna let this dry overnight. It's dry now, but I'm just gonna let it finish up and then I'm gonna start doing some of the white basing. Not white basing, I'm sorry, the white uh, pass. And then we'll see how that all turns out. All right, and here's my first pass on the top of the white pass over top. So same principle. I simply took the same pattern and I flipped it over so it's the opposite so they don't cover each other. And just started going over with a pure white, flat white from Tamiya. And once again, these are not the, these stark uh, contrasts are not gonna be the final look, but as you can see, you see a lot of different patterns. You have like the light gray, the dark gray, the white, and it looks like a, a lot of different panels. So it, it adds a lot of detail. Uh, and when I'm totally done with this, I will put a final finishing coat of a light gray, very light gray, misting over top of it. <clears throat> Excuse me, to, um, to just blend these all together. And then that'll still have that look of, um, of a lot of detail on that, on that uh, panel there. And I'll be doing the same thing on the on the um, uh, cargo modules as well. So, all right. So I'm going to continue on this, and um, and this is coming along really well. All right. All right. So I got some more goodies in the mail today. Been waiting for this for about a month now, but um, finally they released the Paragraphics Photo Etch set for the uh, Discovery, and it's two different sets. And I got both of them. So you have the cockpit with the airlock as well. And you also have the pod bay, which is the one we're going to look at right here. So let me go ahead and take that out of there. And we're going to take a look at the pod bay. And I want to kind of show you what I'm going to be doing with that. And um, <clears throat> get some ideas of how I'm going to create the interior to this and get it all lit up. All right. All right, and here is the um, photo etch set for the pod bay. And it's rather ambitious because uh, there is no interior at all. And um, so it, it is the whole entire pod bay. Uh, usually with Paragraphic, and I really love their, their, um, their kits. I've used them quite a bit, and I think they're quite excellent. Um, they typically uh, have pieces for like the control panels and things of that nature, things to augment what's already there. But in this case, there is no interior at all. So they've created the entire interior for the uh, pod bay and the cockpit. So uh, we'll look at the cockpit here in a little bit, but for right now, I wanna focus on this. And they have um, several pieces you can see there. There's the roof with the openings for lights to come through. And that's attached to the walls. There's the side panel for the lab, I believe it's called. There's the back wall. And there's this other side wall. And there's a part there that you put another section into right there. That section goes into it. And then you have the floor, which is right there. And you have the little pod bay platforms and little grid mark circles that go on top of them. So 
there's even these pieces underneath that you can accommodate with some some square tubing and this piece goes underneath it and those little squares there you can have those extend from the kit so quite extensive they also include the um, airlock door which is blank on this kit it's just a smooth surface little astronaut suits which are pretty cool those can be painted and put on there all right and they even have things like the um, this is one of the air vents at the top that go on the roof they go in those little squares right there okay so quite extensive now I'm still going to be doing a lot of my own scratch building on this kit because um, don't get me wrong this is an awesome ki awesome kit here awesome set but for example like right there this wall there's a lot of detail on this in the actual ship lots of little tubes and pipes and little details so I'm going to augment that uh, in addition like these these parts around the door are raised and have some detail so I'm going to build those up as well and in the back there these are actual tanks that are there so I'm going to probably replace the kit part with some actual tanks that sort of thing I also probably want to cut that door out and put in the um, the uh, really cool little uh, corridor that they come through that has all the little black and white stripes on it so to work on that as well but this is a fantastic template for sure and I can definitely use it to add styrene onto it and build it up so quite pleased with this I'm glad that they made this this is pretty awesome um, and then the one for the cockpit which I'll show here shortly uh, I'll probably leave that as is and paint it because it's it's quite detailed and you're not going to see a ton of the cockpit you are going to see the pod bay quite a bit because I'm going to have the one of the doors open or maybe more of them we'll see so all right, so let me go ahead and get a few things here, and I want to show you some comparisons and kind of give you an idea of what I'm working on here for the pod bag. Okay. All right, so I want to make a bit of a comparison. Um, when this kit was first announced, they had stated that the Mobius is in one one forty four scale, uh, which I, I believe it is. Uh, prior to that, the only other kit that I would think was the best discovery out there was the um, Stargazer models version it's a resin kit which I have and they also claimed it's a 1 1 44 scale uh, now there's a big difference between these two kits uh, their kit is about 30 inches long the Mobius maxes out about 42 inches quite a bit difference a foot, a foot longer than what this one is so uh, I'm not sure where they got their measurements from, but I, I'm kind of thinking this is not 1144 and that the Mobius is. So uh, I had started to build this kit, but I never completed it. And I started scratch building an interior of my own. And I thought, well, they're the same scale. I should be able to take the interior from this one and and use it in the, in the Mobius. But they're not at all the same size. So let me kind of show you here. So here's the two kits side by side. And right off the bat, you can see from the command module that they are nowhere near the same size. I think I can go out on a limb and say <clears throat> that the Stargazer is about two thirds the size of the Mobius. Quite a bit of a difference. Um, some other comparisons. Here's the propulsion unit for the Stargazer and here's the propulsion unit for the Mobius <laughs> once again considerably larger very very different kits entirely um, so here's the interior that I started to build and I just have it kind of taped together but I um, I actually made my own sidewalls they came it came with this bottom it came with this top and then uh, it had just some decals to go around the walls. And so what I did was I used some styrene stripping and styrene sheet and made my own pieces. So here's the um, here's that wall where you see the different uh, patterns there, which I want to kind of reproduce for this kit. And I did use a decal that they had. That's the design you see in there. But I made the rest of it myself. Um, 
Likewise, I also made the back wall and the, and the side wall. And I put some considerable detail on those, as you can see. And so that's what I was saying. You see the difference between this wall and the one that came in the paragraphics? This whole side over to the left here has all these different pipes in detail, which you don't see in the other one. Likewise, you have these kind of padded areas around the door, that sort of thing. So I want to reproduce those as well as the, the actual tanks. Come on, focus. The actual tanks there that you see in the top and over here. So I'm going to try to reproduce that with some styrene and styrene stripping and things like that. Um, so big difference between the two kits. So once again, here's the... Um, Here's the photo etch of the top, the roof. Here's the one for the kit there. So much, much larger than you see there. Um, so definitely, this kit is a must. This pyrograph or paragraphic, sorry, to reproduce the detail. What I'll probably end up doing is using some sheet styrene to reproduce a lot of this in these different sections because some of these are actually raised up it's not just a flat piece um, likewise like I said the the detail on the walls this side lab wall there's no detail at all other than the door and that little etched part and I kind of like the door and I like the etched part so that's fine but what I'm going to do is build up around it with some styrene probably just cut out where the door is and then build up the rest of it using some uh, some styrene stripping so it has some 3d um, thing to it these panels here like these tanks and these tanks here I'm gonna have to cut these out entirely and build a little back wall that has some actual depth to it and build some tanks in there and paint them that kind of thing so the rest of it's fine though the rest of it down below is okay and this part here is okay likewise too here I want to cut that door out and fashion a, um, a walkway behind that that has that that um, part from the movie I'm trying to think of the word for that um, I keep wanting to say enigmatic but it's not it's just a very famous shot from the ship where you see that wall there and he's walking through it and it's it's just a, a weird visual so All right but the top roof is nice and it'll be good for lighting since you have those openings which is cool and um, and I do want to build the little um, fan units and put those in here these little circles here I got to come up with a little kind of a dome that comes down from it as well onto there but but yeah, so this, the kit will do well. I mean, it's going gonna, it's gonna to do what I need it to do and give me what I need. So basically, this sits down inside the rounded part of the ship. The floor comes out of this. Let's see if I can get that on there. So, yeah, so this basically goes right like this coming out. And then the roof folds down, the walls fold in. So, so definitely a really good template to work with. Um, I'm glad that they did this because at this point there really aren't any other interiors out there. So this will work really well for me to be able to make what I want to make with it and build it up. So, okay. So I just want to kind of give you an idea of how that's going to look. Um, I'll be focusing a little bit more on this next week. But I'm also going to continue working on the painting of my of the exterior. So, all right. So we're going to go ahead and wrap up this video for today, and um, I'm going to continue painting the the uh, the spine and the back unit, and then we're going to start working on the interior because uh, I really want to get this hashed out for the command module before I do any painting of that command module. So I can see how that's all going to go in there. So, okay. All right. Well, thanks to all my subscribers and I will see you next week.